Don't know necessarily. This could still be Roger playing it, um, if that's something that they wanted to do. But Team Spirit at least is more afraid of uh, those other heroes that Roger has been playing recently. Um, I guess that it also could have been a general ban out on the clockwork also. Uh, but it feels like this is, again, fitting within the theme that Navi Radiant saw them go for last time, uh, shutting down the vision. And in response, Team Spirit going to take Dyer a Monkey King, Dyer another Dyer hero that offers that. Sure. Whoa! There we go. All right, it's happening, baby. Yeah, you were talking about Rogers and Chat just getting banned out. I think Team Spirit are onto onto them. They they know that uh, there is that potential, and despite that, they're gonna go for the Chen. Looks like General is gonna be on the Night Stalker. This to me feels like it is now uh, quite a strong and cohesive draft from Navi. You have this Necro that's going to be kind of this engine that allows them to siege with the Chen Creeps being that big meat shield up front and center, uh, Disruptor to send people back when they come to TP to defense. So that allow even split pushing doesn't necessarily uh, end up becoming the best big meat answer shield up front and center, have your uh, Disruptor to send people you back when they come to TP. what it takes to deal with the push as it stands so far? They, once again, this is one of those things where it's like you don't have the wave clear. It's not the great. It's not really good at all. Remaining. You have the fissure. You have monkey king, perhaps, but I don't think one monkey of those king things where it like, uses cooldown just remaining. for that. So there's not there's no wave clear, but there is a we're gonna fight you at the tower type of lineup here. So if they do decide to defend towers, it's gonna be off the back of a team fight rather than we're gonna shove out every single wave with the with abilities. Yeah, now they're taking a couple bands out there, the other heroes that might be a problem. Um, it, it looks like they're expecting this to be a crystallized Necro. Um, I'm sure that Dendi can play Necro as well. Do you have a, a way that you, or a, a certain preference for either style? I guess it depends on like what other hero you want. So what is it that Navi is missing from this draft right now? I actually hope they take Juggernaut right now. Uh, simply because I think Juggernaut is, he's decent against the Necrophos, but like with the kind of lineup they have right now i think if you pick a jug it's like a very old school lineup but between your healing ward the the chen ultimate Ten as well as the necrophos remaining. heals it is really difficult to do enough damage to win these team fights five seconds remaining yeah and they have this brewmaster which offers much more control than damage out of the the off lane uh sometimes you would end up seeing something like a dark seer or what have you that adds up giving that extra bit of damage with the iron shell and of course setting up the attacks but uh team spirit they're gonna need to address that in the last pick as well and if navi preempt it by taking some extra heals could be an issue the other route to go is maybe something that uh sort of pushes out the side lanes when there could be split pushing or wave clearing going on. So like something like an Ember or a Tinker or stuff like that. Uh, but we'll have to wait and see what Navi want to go for. One last pick now. And they're taking their time with it. I also like the Jug pick just because they don't exactly have the greatest of right-click damage. So Juggernaut somewhat fulfills that. Um, also a pretty good follow-up to uh, a Necro Necrophos ultimate. You could always just buy blink on necrophos and immediately find the brewmaster just ult him and then drop your jug ulti on him as well potentially taking him out of the fight before he can actually uh split in these engagements yeah. you know the other one you got a pudge fountain hook there we go it's back <laughs> if navi are back maybe fountain hooking is back fountain hooking hasn't worked in like <laughs> when did they patch it out it's it's been so many years i don't even remember when it happened it was like around the early TIs, I'm sure. I don't know when exactly, but you know, you gotta you gotta bring it back every now and then. Back when you were like what, seven years old? Yeah, definitely five years ago. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Last pick, Diety. here it is. It's going to be a Marana. So doesn't really check the box we were talking about, but the Broodmother as the last pick instantly from Team Spirit. They knew what they wanted. DK Phobos. He's a monster on this guy. So this is going to be uh, Iceberg on the Brewmaster, not DK Phobos. Interesting. Wow. Dendi is going to be on that Marana. I definitely did not expect a Marana pick, but we'll have to see how it plays out. Uh, personally, I'm not a big fan of it, but she's kind of like a all-rounder type of hero, so... You know, as long as you get your levels, you get your farm, you, you mean, you're going to be effective. So not much, not much in terms of synergy, but, you know, you're there to dish out damage. Well, last pick was the Brood. You talked about the Marana. It's, you know, the damage that they have. 
this Phobos brood, is it going to keep Chen in one lane, or uh, how much of an issue do you think it's going to be, like, running at the Necrophos? Is Crystallize going to be able to stay okay in that lane? Uh, yeah, I think Necrophos actually does fine against the brood. Um, you can always go Shroud away and, you know, heal up. And I, don't, I think it only takes, like, two Death Pulses oh. to... FNG just TP'd to his Ancient. Oh. He misclicked, so they don't have wards down early. We'll see if that ends up being an issue. I wonder if they wanted to try and like block out camps or something. I don't. I don't know if that's actually him misclicking. Apparently, I I heard uh, that this is a bug currently. Really? Yeah. And apparently, it's been a bug since TI, and it has not been fixed yet. Do you know what the bug entails? What the issue is with it? Uh, I think from the thread, apparently, like if you TP too quickly. Uh huh. Um. What ends up happening is that you end up TPing either to the completely wrong place or you end up TPing to, to your uh, your Ancient. Hmm. Uh, there was actually a replay of this bug happening in, at TI. It was OG against C9. Mm -hmm. And both AUI and Jerex both TP'd to the incorrect <laughs> locations. <laughs> oh my god. That's so I, I, I'm going to have to assume that this bug still exists. Well, interestingly enough, FNG was still able to get his ward down up here on the high ground. Oh, arrow. Uh, Monkey King in trouble. ILTW, he's taking a lot of damage. Look at the damage coming in from the Chen. He's yeah, got that. I mean, he's got he's the got no stone. armor. He's got uh -oh. the blight stone. Oh, my God. First blood, First blood First drawn by General. Navi off me. to a hot start early. I'm kind of surprised Monkey King didn't even... Uh, skill tree dance. I kind of expected him to at least attempt to make it out by running away long enough to dance or to jump onto trees, but not going to make it out there. And like you said, that Blightstone on Chen, minus two armor on a hero that has one armor, I mean, you're going to take so much right-click damage. Yeah. Uh, Roger now should be able to make it over and pick up a creep for himself. It's going to be a centaur, so not the best one in the world. And uh, in the meantime, FNG is going to try and soak up experience. He talked about the Brewmaster. He actually is going to be going bot still. Uh, and it's DK Phobos who's playing mid against Dendi. Yeah, they're going to switch up the lanes because DK Phobos is pretty much their Broodmother player. And I guess they wanted this matchup for the Brood. I, it's kind of interesting. I think that they just wanted to run Brood mid no matter what it was since... Like, they didn't even take time to check that there was a Marana pick since it was instant. Um, and as far as, like, mid-brood versus a Marana, it's not something we see all that often. Do you have any ideas of how this might work out as the sort of game wears on? Oh, brood, brood is going to win this matchup. Like, what are, you, what are you supposed to do as a Marana against all the spider -Man? You There's actually nothing you can do. So either Dendi has a decent time and manages to farm and not die, or DK Phobos just outfarms him, or even potentially manages to kill him. Oh, sentry battles going on. Wow. DK Phobos actually holding onto two sentries, so he's going to get rid of that one. Also had the Tango. I think that this one didn't end up being able to get taken quickly enough. Chen, Roger, he's going to pick up a Dark Troll Summoner now. If they want to, they could think about moving mid with this. It is only the early levels, so Phobos still struggling a little bit in terms of CS, but as you said, the spiders are going to be the big issue as this matchup wears on. My thrift rewarded. A gift from the tempest of battle. Well, all right. Roger is making life so hard for FNG. He's just following this Earthshaker, and Earthshaker isn't really able to do anything. And not to mention, you know, Night Stalker with a Chen. Against oh. a Monkey King, this Monkey King is gonna have a rough time. Look how much damage he might takes. Might end up taking some extra bits here. Like you were talking about that Blightstone Chen. The one plus side is that he can get close to the tower and get the extra armor from that. But yeah, he is really struggling. Still has five tangos though. As Dendi forced to retreat back to the lane, they're swapping it up and they want to put the Necro Can against I? DK Phobos instead. Yeah, this is the matchup that you want for your if you're Navi right now. You don't want anyone else except for the Necro against this Brute. Otherwise, you don't have an answer for the... Oh, Crystallize? It's getting too close to the tower. What? Where was this? Mid lane. Oh, Jesus. I didn't see that at all. I was like... I was thinking Crystallize safe lane, but he just ended up walking into tower? He accidentally... He walked into uh, Death Pulse to CS, and he actually walked into 
into tower range, and then because he used death pulse, uh, death pulse, all the spiderlings um, no longer phase, so they blocked them in, and he just took so much damage. Holy crap! Well, that's a pretty nifty little combo there, and they end up taking down the Necro early on. Things looking okay for Team Spirit. FNG. I feel bad. Go for it. I feel oh bottom lane. Fiber's gonna go down. Dendi. <laughs> I was gonna say I feel really bad for Crystallize because he's the only one who can handle this matchup. But he came at the worst time possible. He was level two versus a level four Broodmother. He just like, walked in and pretty much died. Like you, you have to be on the same level if you want to have a good matchup against the Broodmother. But if you're behind this many levels, I mean, what are you supposed to do? Your death pulse isn't even high enough level to kill off the Spiderlings. Yeah. They're trying to chase down Karito here and are going to be able to get the clap in a second, which should slow him enough. I think that they're looking for the net, able to catch, Radiance and this Radiance should be the kill. General picks it up. But look at the crystallized mid. Yeah, you're talking about the DK Phobos is level 5 and just dominating this lane. Yeah, the one nice thing is right now is that this mid lane is like a complete disaster right now, but... At least they're doing well in the other lanes right now. Dendi was able to secure himself a, a kill in the bottom lane. And this off lane is doing extremely well. This Monkey King is not having a good time. General is just ruining his lane with uh, the help of Roger. Roger is just being a nuisance yeah. to Team Spirit right now. Well, and Monkey King is still getting good CS, but it's more just that like the, the Night Stalker is going to be able to cause a lot of issues. and. I mean, you take a look at the the net worth right now. He is a little bit behind, also. So, are you look at this mid lane? Crystallize yeah. just tried to walk into lane, and he lost half his life just by eating spider lane. What? Look he at this. He is maybe gonna He's end dead. up dying. He's dead. Well, DK Phobos <laughs> showing the power of Broodmother. Still a hero. <laughs> ah, very well done. Um, so what do you do at this point? Like level six Brood it doesn't feel like anybody on the map can deal with her. There, there really is no good way of dealing with it right now. Mm. Like, in order for you to do enough damage, you would need Dendi to Starstorm, but Starstorm is not enough damage to kill off the entire uh, wave of spiders, and you can't exactly oh spam God. it all the time. Look how much damage it does. And then he just runs them away. Middle tower is under attack. Yep, ends up missing yep. the second Starstorm now, and in the meantime, while we're watching that, Roger ends up killing LTW top. All right, my camera work is garbage right now. I apologize, everybody. We're going to get it. It'll be fine. Next one will be good. <laughs> it's okay. That it, it happens, you know? you, yeah. you got to keep an eye on this brood. That's for sure. Oh, Biber, he's going to end up running into Snake Owen. We'll able to catch him out. This should be a kill, maybe, possibly. Enchant Totem. And he's gone. Navi are going to have to do very well in these Dyer's other lanes in order for them to uh, kind of deal with this this Broodmother, because this Broodmother is definitely going to be a big Radiant's problem for them uh, as this continues. Oh, and it's like the tier one tower taken at six minutes in. Granted, like, you know, it is a Broodmother and there are issues sometimes with this hero falling off in the later stages, but uh, I don't know. There's been a lot of changes to Brood recently where I feel like she's more capable of going late game. Oh yeah, definitely. There's a lot of that is thanks to the uh, the talents that she has. Her talents are incredibly strong for a right-click Broodmother. But uh, one one thing to keep note of is the amount of farm that General is able to get because like this is off lane. The help of with the help of Roger, oh, they found the brute. They found the Monkey King. Yeah, they, they thought, knew. He thought he could hide. Yeah, not gonna happen. Very Meanwhile, well done. down here in the bottom lane, they have Crystallized and Snako getting ran on, and it looks like with the Moonlight Shadow they will be able to do it. But the other thing is that we have a very heavy push coming in from Navi. This is two catapults. Roger able to steal the Dire Catapult, and they're gonna TP in TPs. absolutely everybody, and I don't think that they're gonna find anybody either. Roger, yeah, they don't have any way to catch him. There's a Boundless Strike. Dyer. He's gonna find him. They see him, but... Yeah, they're not going to use it. I don't think the stun is long enough for them to catch up anyways. It's only 0 0.8 seconds, so... But this tower is already down. Dyer's Tier 2 is down. It's 7 minutes. So, there is the heavy Brood push, but there's also the heavy Chen push. This game might not last all that long, depending on how it goes. Do you think this is a game where it's worth it for Dendi to get an Ag Scepter, so that way he can clear out the spiders? Or does it not come quick enough? Uh, for the dead. That's a tough one. I think I think you do still, 
Because they, they do need someone who can deal with this group, and I think Dendi is the only one who's capable of doing that. So I'm going to go ahead and say yes, but it depends also on how well Crystallize is able to catch up. I think if he's able to catch up, then with the, the help of Veil, you actually have enough damage to uh, kill off most of the spiders with one death pulse. Okay. Fair enough. So eight and a half minutes in, it is tier two tower taken in the top lane. Where's this Chen gonna head to next? That's the other big question. Looks like Roger is going for a wraparound here. They have Dark Troll Summoner, Centaur Conqueror, Hellbear Smasher. They just need to find the brood. And it looks like they're trying to bait out Dendi right now. Oh, they know where he is. Yeah, DK Phobos is doing a good job of this. Can they actually get there? Darkness, nighttime, dust is there. They found Phobos, but they can't do anything to stop it. And well, the clap for the spiders. The fissure uh -oh. to turn it around. Roger, There's a lot of spiders. In. Nowhere left to go. They do take some of those spiders, but they ended up losing the Chen. And well, I don't know if it's really going to end up being worth it at the end of the day. Well, the thing is, while this brood mother is incredibly scary, uh, Navi are still doing very well for their their side links. The only one who is really suffering. Greatly is this Necrophos. Crystallize is going to be needing some time to actually catch up. It's a good start that he's not dead here. And well, if they manage to kill off Iceberg, this is a huge catch up for him, and they're going to get him. The power of General. Four points in Void. And they are able to make that happen. Maybe we end up seeing a chase down here in the mid lane as well as Dendi is getting Reina, but the Moonlight Shadow keeps him alive, and he has a leap as well. Things get too testy. Guys, he's, he's got to be so careful. All right, yeah, he's maybe going to end up dying. Leap, does he have another web? Not quite, but with the Monkey King coming in, Dendi eventually going to be brought down. I was ex Regeneration. And the regen for DK Phobos. Yeah. They definitely need this brood to keep up the dominance. It's the most powerful hero on the map by far right now, but it's still Na'Vi who can put themselves in a position maybe to take some more towers here. Oh. So Nako's almost level 6. They're going to glimpse him. Is this going to be enough? There's Fisher. a Neko coming in, but a great block from FNG. Crystallize makes his way around, him. though. The arrow oh, is going to connect, and this should be a kill. They get the Reaper Scythe off at the very end. You taste your own rotting tongue. <laughs> Despite getting the uh, Reapers off, Earthshaker is still up in like 20 seconds. <laughs> Doesn't take very long for him to respawn, being only level 4 right now. Yeah. Well, but yeah, like you said, uh, Team Spirit, they're very reliant on this brood to pretty much carry them until the rest of the team is able to come online right now. Because none of them are too threatening right now. Oh, Static Storm is available, but I think Seneko's going to end up dying. Maybe, possibly, can they get him out of here? Lots of damage. The spiders are still chasing, and Dendi, well, he's going to almost be Radiant able to keep him alive. Seneko's still attack. taking those little hits, and 14 HP, he gets away. Oh my god, the 7, actually. Nice Stalker almost has the Hand of Midas as well. Definitely help out his farm. Radiance See if Roger is, is able attack. to get in a position to take this catapult over. He is, so this might be a movement to actually finally take that tower. As he does have a couple of the pushing creeps as well as that little chain lightning one. This Chen pick is doing a lot of work for Navi right now. I think like, oh, he's going to leap in. They find Roger. Bruce Split is there as well. Roger, he's going to end up going down. Hand of God, not enough to keep him alive, I don't believe. But maybe they can find a return kill here. No more net. Nah, ILTW should be able to get Iceberg out. has no mana. He does have a mango, though. So he can always mango split. Looks him back in. Static storm down. That's a problem. He's taking a lot of damage here. They summon some skeletons. He's going to be able to find that kill for the cost of a chain frost. And oh, now man. they've also got themselves a monkey king. General has Void back up in a second. And he is going to be able to throw it onto Fiverr. So they turn their attentions onto the Lich. They also bring a crystallized Reaper Scythe finishes it off. While this is happening, Brood pushing mid. Still haven't done a ton of damage to the tower yet, though, as Crystallize takes down Viver eventually. Brood Mother finishing up that Orchid now. This mid lane is just so dangerous. There's really 
not much they can do to uh, stop this brood from just killing anyone who comes into the lane solo. They definitely need to have like people sitting behind each other now. Yeah. Well, and Chen is sort of forced to go into their jungle because Phobos is taking over not only the mid lane. Oh, Denny but has to be careful. He might get the jungle on him. Yeah, there's going to be the fissure, and he's in trouble. Does have stick charges as well, but. Oh, uh, Leap. So he gets it to the shrine. Okay, they have a oh, ward here as well. Might they might be able to turn this back around. Trying to take down that brute. Good jump away. They glimpse him back. TK Phobos in trouble and going to go down. That is huge. Snakeo finds the kill. And now on to Kurito. FNG looking to get ran at as well. They have another urn charge back up in three seconds. Avoid as well. If they want to fully commit to this, can they get him? They do. General running out. And looks like with that. He should be able to escape. Well, gets caught again. Still more damage. Uh, trying to run away. The Roll chain frost. He has oh. a flip it through it. Oh my god. Earn as well. Trying He's to get out. Make it. Oh my god. The great escape. And they're gonna, they're gonna turn it around. They want to look for more again. General, he's healed up. Oh, Viper's gonna Viber. get caught. General somehow yeah. makes a kill out of it. He has looked like the best player on Navi throughout these qualifiers. General is an incredibly good player, I'm telling you. He's not just a bad rider. Oh. Right as we right as we uh, compliment him, he actually earns the wrong person. Well, they might be able to find a kill on the Brute here. They spot him out. Seneko pulls it back in. Not enough mana for Static Storm. They still but are going to have enough, I they think. Need Maybe, possibly, they, they get got him. him. Oh, and FMG isn't six yet. He's one creep, one or two creeps off. That would have been big. Seneko's still getting scouted. He does have dust yes. not on him. Yes, they do, actually. He's going to go down. Middle tower is under attack. But once again, the Broodmother is going down. So I, I think with these couple of kills, I think Broodmother is now much more manageable. Like, Disruptor now has the level 6. Or, sorry, it's level 9 now. So he has the higher level of Thunderstrike as well as the maxed out Glimpse and Static Storm. I think if you... Pretty much give everything to the uh, or put everything on the brood. She's gonna die pretty quickly. Yeah, I, I think. I mean, if you look at the levels of disruptor, he got the two kills on the brood, if I'm not mistaken. So he's only one level behind the brewmaster. Uh, it's pretty nuts how quickly he was able to get those levels up. Yeah, and while all of this is happening, Crystallize is able to catch up to a, a pretty decent amount. Finishes his four staff, which is going to help his team a lot, as well as himself. Not uh -oh. having to work too much. Dendi mid lane, in some trouble. We'll have a he lead back it. up in a second. We'll see. Not going to be able to make it happen. That was really close, though. They have to be careful not to get isolated by this... by this Orchid Brood right now. Yes. Tier 1 tower, again going to be assaulted, but they have the Frost Armor on already. I don't think that Viver oh, is going to be able to stop this. Oh, is he dead? Yeah, he ends up going down. Pull back in one, though. They've got Viver and going to throw out the Reapers on him. That's a kill. And they will be able to force staff away and I think get out of here. Monkey King's still chasing, but it's a hard, hard one to take. Kinetic healed down. Still slowed, still stunned. A second stun coming out and he is going to drop in the mid lane. PK Phobos still not getting measurable damage onto the tower. There's just so many explosives. <laughs> yeah. Once again, DK Phobos back in this mid lane, just never leaving this lane. This is pretty much his home now. Going to be going for a Blink Dagger next. To make sure that he's a little safer, doesn't get caught out. Yeah. Kind of surprised that they're sitting on their Brewmaster split, though. Guess they don't feel strong enough to fight yet, even with the Brew split. And I'm wondering, as far as the itemization in this game, you, you look at what Navi is building towards, it feels like it's a little bit later stages. You know, a Chen Agonims, Night Stalker is picking up the Handomitis, whereas on the other side for Spirit, it's like, you know, a Vlad's for Brewmaster. It really feels like Team Spirit want to end this game on the earlier side. It's very difficult to end the game early against a lineup like Navi, especially since they're not even they're not even ahead in net worth. So yeah. I think that's... That, uh, option kind of you know, goes out the window. Well, Spiders again scouting. They jump forward. Marana able to leap away. Good reaction time there as ILTW is looking and the smoke is not going to bear fruit. 
They do get some really deep wards right now, Team Spirit. Well, the side lanes are just going to push out. Yeah, while all of this is happening, Roger, he's farming up a storm on his Chen. He's a little over halfway, finishing his Scepter. It's uh, pretty impressive. Yeah. And Team Spirit are all looking mid. They want to go if they get an opening onto Dendi as he's trying to keep this tower Radiant's from being sieged and taken down, but it's just, it's so hard to make it happen. And, all right, Static Storm the Spiderlings, why not? Got him. <laughs> and Marana gets the deny as well. That was like a, a hundred gold for the Static Storm. <laughs> Maybe like a hundred fifty. I mean, you get what you can take, right? <laughs> why not? Uh, it's funny seeing how Team Spirit just run away too after seeing that the ultimate has been committed. <laughs> Not even looking for, for kills. Yeah. Man, look at this top lane. It's so problematic for Team Spirit. FNG right now, they're going to walk forward and try and take him down. Echo Slam a little bit off the mark, oh, but I think it's still going to be enough as Dendi is going to be killed off. And it looks like they'll get out with the rest of them. Probably? Hadouken gets They're getting thrown. blocked up by these these spiders. Kinetic field to save his life. That's also oh, going to be a setback. Not, to commit. not bad. Yeah, there's a lot of damage being dealt onto Roger right now. The chase is still there. They get the orchid onto him, and looks like he is going to end up going down. Another Hadouken. They're actually out of mana right now, so they can't do it anymore. But they will kill off all of the Shen Creeks here. At least... Most of them. There's one centaur left. Very good uh, pick off by Team Spirit, and they did that without committing their Bruce split. Mm -hmm. So they're they're sticking around. They know that they can still fight Excellent. since they still have one big ultimate. No chain frost or echo, but maybe they can go for this tier one. Uh, Disruptor Seneko here is. Maybe just a bit too far out. He is going to be punished for that one quite heavily. And just a further realization that you actually can't walk outside your base up there right now. Oh, Navi say, we want to get the hell out of here. And so they're heading down to the south side. General maybe going to push out this lane a little bit further. But he also could be in trouble if he's not careful. There's no blink on Earthshaker, but a Fissure and Orchid can kill him just as quickly. They're kind of baiting Iceberg right now. Iceberg is indeed very tanky. I think they. I think Navi just wait for General to finish his scepter. He's pretty close to it. And once they have that kind of vision, you know, you don't have to worry about getting caught out by the Monkey King standing on top of you. Oh, top lane though. Yeah, they're TPing into this one. They need to be a little bit careful. The Fissure is blocking off. Seneko's going to go for the long wraparound. There's the fourth step down to the low ground. Chain Frost not going to bounce all that much, but it does actually end up hitting three times. But they do have Ghost Shroud as well as Stick Charges now. So, so the second he's alive, but not long enough. Now the lift up onto Dendi. It's all falling apart for Navi. They're going to be able to throw another boulder there. Dendi taking a lot of damage. Gets to the Shrine. He's a liver for the moment. But is it going to last that much longer? They jump forward, find it again. There is just non-stop action. Team Spirit diving for this. FNG is going to end up going down, but he got the Echo off as well. Now they've got a lot of oh these Shard goodness. Golems that are going to be chasing them down. And Roger also going to fall, just Team killing Spirit. them inside their own base. My god. Team Spirit are insane. <laughs> these guys are so aggressive. I mean, it works, right? 2700 oh. gold swing. <laughs> I mean, that that wasn't just like an only working. That was that was awesome. That was uh, quite the thing to see there. That kind of uh, dive coming out at 21 minutes, or 22 minutes even. Well, I think it highlights the issues that Navi has right now. That if they have all of these creeps that can tank towers and you know. Navi just don't have much damage right now. And Seneko keeps on getting, like, initiated on early. I think part of it also is no Static Storm that time. They are going to be able to move in now and find themselves Biver. A great Fissure, a great Boundless Strike. Up here to the north, though, they've been able to catch on to this Broodmother. It looks like she is going to fall out of gold going into the coffers of Roger. General TPing out. They might have gone a bit too far now, but the Hand of God comes out. Crystallize oh, with the Ghost Shroud. 
Oh my god, oh, another Fisher! Fisher! Sure. Sure. FNG gonna end up going down! I don't think it's gonna end up mattering. They have another, they've caught themselves the brew. Crystallize trying to run away now, he's getting a lot of regen from this. Another Fissure laid out from FNG. General Silence trying to chase. I think he is gonna end up dying, but it looks like they might be able to take down Biver before he fully gets out. Crystallize and General get him with the Urn Tick and the Heartstop Aurora. Now the chase further forward, the Shard Gold is chasing oh, after Fissure. FNG. Dendi again jumps away. Needs to get out of there before the Wukong's command takes him down. All of these Shard Golems and the Mud Golems Radiance may be going to be able to <laughs> get him if they so can get another right round. Now. They pull him back in, glimpse. another glimpse, and that's going to be ILTW finally falling. So Team Spirit maybe yeah, dove a bit too deep there. There are like four Fissures in that whole fight, though. I'm not going to lie, this is, this is the kind of game I like watching because they just constantly fight. Both teams just want to keep <laughs> fighting. They think they can fight and they just consistently run at each other. This is the best kind of Dota to watch. All right, what do we got? Roger has an Aghanim Scepter, so he's gonna be able to pick up the Ancients now. Um, Marana's picked up a Yasha. Anything else that's really sticking out to you? Night Stalker, almost Ags? I think that's probably the biggest one right now. Everything else, not so much. Look, look at look at Seneko, he just keeps using his ulti, Farm Spider. <laughs> and the worst part is he's only getting maybe like 30% of it. Yeah. Like there's still eight of them running around with less than 100 health. I think the other big thing to keep in mind here is that last fight basically like broke the contain that was going on Navi's base. They couldn't leave before. They had wards that were all over the map and they like fought around enough that they were able to actually make it out of their base and now they can start to gain some semblance of map control. It's only for a, a very brief moment, though, that Team Spirit are kind of containing them again at this uh, mid and top lane. Dendi is able to push out the bottom wave, though. This is going to help them a lot, but for the most part, Team Spirit are pretty much always on uh, Na'Vi side of the map. And it still is the Broodmother, top of the net worth 13,000. Building towards that BKB. Another night time. This might be FNG in a little bit of a pickle. If they can find him, they spot out Crystallize. He knows what's up. He needs to get the hell out of there. But the Yule Scepter lift up. Now they've got him contained. They're going to be able to find the Silence and a quick kill. Very well done, Dendi. Do they find another? They've got themselves oh, the Monkey no King. He's stuck. They take down the tree and take down the MK. Didn't happen. All right, <laughs> Team happened? Spirit. Oh, the dead of night. Um, somehow this ends up working, and it makes more space for, like, Seneca to go out here, and he's gonna throw out more damage onto the spiders. A ton of gold for him. I think the big issue that this, like, whole, this kind of playstyle has for Team Spirit is that FNG is pretty much never gonna finish his blink at this rate. He is not really yeah. taking any time to farm, nor the, nor, uh, and he's, like, also not really winning these engagements for it's part or there for the gold, so he's just stuck at having no money. And once again, <laughs> mid lane. There have been, I think, four static storms used on spiders now. This is the only way that they can stop the spiders, really. That's pretty hilarious. Yeah, especially since, like, Dendi isn't picking up any of the AoE items. There's no Maelstrom or there, and uh, there's also no. Aghanim Scepter, so not much AoE on the Marana, and Necrophos is going to be going for that Radiance at least. So yeah. once the Necrophos has Radiance, that's actually a very good way to deal with the Spiderlings. Well, honestly, the fact that Na'Vi have been able to win these fights without really having Seneko ultimate all that much, because he's having to use it on Spiderlings, it's a testament that this game is probably going to start to look scary for Team Spirit if they don't sort of put something together now. Oh my god, he's gonna do it again. No, he's just freaking him out. And he is going to die for it. Go Scepter, <laughs> but yeah, it's to no avail. He's probably just like, whatever. Doesn't really mind. General does have the Scepter now. And he's got that gem as well. So Monkey King, not gonna have an easy time anymore. In fact, I might not. I might even consider him not actually, oh, arrow. Uh, yeah, they are going to have better vision through this area. Right now, Dire, they do spot out a little bit, but they take down all the oh, spider the two links black now. Dragons, though. 
That's pretty nifty. Oh, Bruce split. Now run away. Roger going to get caught. Four staff there, but he looks to be escaping, I think, unless they can get the lift up with that Storm Panda. There's the oh, lift up instead onto Crystallize. Dangerous. Roger taking more damage, but not going to go down yet. This so. is very dangerous for Team Spirit. That was their split. Oh, and he's getting his Blink Dagger broken by the Murana Illusions. Iceberg's going to go down. They get the silence now under Murana. BKB popped as well, but she's not oh, going to die to this oh. one. Now the jump away. Good Static Storm finally used on enemy heroes. And they end up making it work. BKB down for ILTW as well. But they still have vision. Yeah. They're going to chase down everyone one by one. Uh, not a whole lot of answers here. They do have a Chain Frost from Lich if they want to throw it out, but they need to wait for the proper moment. Now they get the Reaper Sight looking for FNG. Can they get him? General might look for a stun there in a moment. Roger is bouncing back and forth between them, and it looks like it's not going to end up being enough to find any kills at all. Dendi takes his Manta Dodge, able to get himself the hell out. A double kill, keeping himself alive and killing off Team Spirit. That was such a great engagement from Na'Vi. This Aghanim, Scepter, Night Stalker putting in so much work. It's, the team fight just becomes so much easier for you when you have all that vision and you can see exactly where Team Spirit are. And the worst part about it for Team Spirit is that they don't even have Blink Daggers on the Earthshaker still. Like, even if there was no Aghanim, Scepter, that fight looked very difficult for them. Yeah. And now with Roshan taken, given over to Crystallize, a Radiant's gonna be in the works and almost completed. Question starts to loom. What is Team Spirit's plan B? H how do they finish out this game? How do they even start to take back an advantage? Because it's 7,000 net worth lead right now for Navi and shooting up that direction for experience as well. I'm, I'm really unsure at this point. It's, it, you know, you actually had someone who can kind of make space for the rest of your team to catch up through DK Phobos' uh, Broodmother, but we're reaching that point where he's. Not as effective. He's kind of dropped into that team fighting broodmother now, rather than I'm gonna pressure lanes because that necro necrophos is incredibly close to radiance. Oh, that was a just nice little send back there. The creeps, the creeps brought to him. They weren't even able to finish off the ancient black dragon. That's the power of those creeps, though. They push the lanes quite rapidly. And now the tables have turned. Navi are pressuring the lanes, able to get themselves across the river now. No longer have to hide on their side of the map. Yeah, and that's the power of Night Soccer, like you're saying. It's BKB almost completed for him. The Mask of Madness Monkey King not working out the way that they would have hoped it looks like. In general, he is going to be silenced after he gets the Hunter and the Night off. So he will live through that. Ooh, Dendi? He hit the arrow onto the yeah. brood, but... Yeah, no one else around, no point of risking it. Fissure isn't going to connect, and FNG still about 1,300 away from his Blink Dagger. So, I'm wondering when it is, like, I, I feel like Earthshaker just needs to go off and farm. Yeah, FNG is going to do that. The problem is he's still, at, like, over 1,000 gold away from it, so it's going to take a while for him to get to that point. And do you expect that Navi are going to try and push the issue before that happens? Like, are they going to try and make stuff happen now since they know that he doesn't have Blink? Oh, definitely. They're going to pressure him. I don't, I don't, I, I'm pretty sure they don't even care about the Earthshaker Blink at this point. You have General with Division and oh, oh no. gonna find the Brewmaster. Oh, they, they go down of damage. Yeah, he's not gonna end up dying. Oh my god, look at those. Echo Slam comes in. They're actually able to make this work. And Roger now taking a little bit of damage, sharing it with his creeps. Carido dropping low as well. Can they make this happen? The Radiance Burn is far too much. And LTW just gonna try and TP away. He will be able to make it happen. The combo of the Radiance Burn and the double Fireball, that's 190 damage per second with the Fireball when there's two of them laid on top of each other. I think it stacks. I could be wrong about that, actually. Dyer's top barracks are under attack. I think uh, that's some of the trivia that's a little more difficult to actually know about since Dyer's not many people play Chen. Yeah. And more importantly, not many people end up reaching Dyer's the scepter so that you can actually see it in action. But I mean, the damage over time is there now. You know, these spiderlings, not an issue anymore. With that, they get one set of racks. This game looks very much in, in Navi's favor now. Oh. Oh, they can't even kill the Black Dragon. Roger doing a great job at saving his Black Dragons. 
Man, that changed to Chen. I don't remember how many patches ago it was, but I think it was like 6.82 or something. Makes it such a great split pusher. And Navi taking full advantage. They take a whole lane of racks up top and then take the tier 3 down bottom. And now it's really starting to feel even more as if the game is just completely in their control. 16,000 net worth swing. And this in just under 10 minutes. Yeah, just look at how much farm everyone has all of a sudden on, on Navi. It's like the top five net worth. All of them on Navi's side except for our DK Phobos being at top. Yeah. But he's just a lone broodmother. You can't expect him to do all the work. For sure. And, well, it's a BKB done for the Night Stalker now. One in the works for Dendi. Also have a Shiva's guard that's going to be ready, or at least the plate mail that will be done for Crystallize once the Aegis ends up wearing off. Still 30 seconds before that ends up happening. It must be, like, the most frustrating thing ever to play heroes like Brewmaster as well as Earthshaker against the Night Stalker with Ags. It's just so <laughs> difficult to find your way into these, uh, these team fights. Then one nice thing that Iceberg has is he has a BKB, so he's not going to be the target anymore. I don't really see any way they can burst him down before he ultis, uh, with the exception of him getting Reaper Scythe beforehand, but he should be pretty safe uh, to go into these fights now. But FNG still doesn't have the Blink Dagger, and... It's 34 minutes in the game. I, the thing, The thing is, even if he does get it, it doesn't really guarantee his ability to uh, contribute to these team fights. All right, BKB up for Marana. And potentially the beginning oh, of the ruination, they caught ILTW. He is going to die now, and no way out of that one. General finishes him off. So far today, General has scoreline, I don't know assists, but it's like 21 or like 23 and three or something crazy like that. He's had a ridiculous KDA. Yep, for sure. I think that's kind of like Navi's playstyle right now as well. They they really want General to be their uh, early game playmaker, so they always give him a lot of resources to work with instead of just like leaving him alone and hoping that he can manage to catch up later or get stuff done on his own. 20 seconds until nighttime right now. That being said, with the Aegis gone a couple of minutes ago, it is... It's starting to feel more and more now as if even without that Aegis, they can kind of do whatever the hell they want. Yeah, that is most certainly how it feels right now. And Dendi, he finishes the BKB as well. So this Marana sitting at a very in a really good spot when it comes to just dishing out the right clicks. Crystallize, getting closer and closer to it. We've got more Ancients up and online now. Not to mention this frenzy on the Ancient Thunderhide, giving that extra 75 bonus attack speed. Echo Slam mid, they found an opening. Is it going to be enough though? I think that they do. They burn through, crystallize, 800 gold going their way. Dendi forced to BKB, try and leap away. They're still chasing though, they've got eyes on them. Do they have detection? Not as of yet, Static Storm down, another BKB pop for General. They're trying to turn and fight, LTW. His is almost worn off as well. But do they have damage without that Night Stalker? Oh my god, Roger. He's got the Menagerie with him, and they've caught Phobos now. And if they can manage to bring him down... Well, maybe this isn't going to end up working out. They get the Wukong's command. DK Phobos dodges the arrow just barely. They're chasing out Roger. The blink forward by the Brood turns oh, to fight. But he he summons his creeps and turns around and kills him off. Surprise! Got some buddies on my side here. He is going to end up taking some more damage and eventually be brought down. But yeah, I think he's all right with that. You, you man up against the Brood, you win. That's a that's a win in my book. They're going to find more here. Oh, the glimpse. They caught ILTW. The fireball is actually absurd. And buyback from the Brood. They need it now more than ever. The final tally is going to end up being... Now, still probably into the favor of Team Spirit, but it's the structural damage that's going on now that's the bigger issue. No Echo. They do have a Fissure coming out momentarily gonna connect. Uh, they can kill General, that's a huge kill, but can they kill him is the problem. 
looking for that opening they wanted so badly. General is gonna Holy end up going. Where's that gem? They pick up the gem. That's a huge kill. But is it gonna be enough? He's gonna right, buy so back. They want to end this party. right now. They're going They're in. They're tired of it. They've had enough of your shenanigans. Navi no with the triple arrow. Can they kill him off? Is he gonna end up going down? Ah, looks like Crystallize still chasing. There's the defuse of blade. He's out of there. No buyback on Monkey King. A minute, two minutes down. And it looks like this is about it. Roger. Roger is back as well. This is potentially the final engagement. They do have Echo. Now forward, Iceberg pops his ulti, but the Yule Scepter lift up. General turns to fight. He gets another lift up now onto the Necro. They're going to pop the ulti, but there's still the gem. I believe that that one was left on the Bruin. General, man enough trying to take down Phobos. He is doing a lot of damage there, but not quite Dyer's enough. Flips right, back in. Found Phobos. Good Triple really boy. Echo! They turn it. They find the kill. And that's actually going to be not insignificant. General needs to get the hell out of there. All right, Gem is actually on General. Chain Frost only bounces once. Crystallize with the Radiance Burn. It looks like it's going to be enough there as well. They take down the Brewmaster. Gem on the ground. Four heroes still there. They don't have the Monkey King for 85 seconds. And looks like they're just going to call it. They're not going to push themselves further. General's trying to find DK Phobos. He's going to find him. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. The team needs to come help him immediately. Are you going to make it there in time? Fissure comes out. Boss armor comes out. But he's fine. Okay, Crystallize still there with the Radiance. They're not a- Look at Roger! Roger is not afraid at all! He's just running at him. They throw down the double fireball. It actually is going to force these two back. He's gotten confident since he killed that brood. I mean, I definitely like that play. He had vision of him, so he wanted to go in there and then hit him with the Tesla face because pure damage. Oh. So there's a chance that it does enough damage to kill him off. So DK Phobos forced to use the DKB not to take any chances. And Navi really and truly are in the lead now. And I still feeling like, you know, there's there's an opportunity, a way in which if like they, you know, completely throw away their advantage, then this game ends up going their way, but it's really tough. And buyback status, none left for the dire. Hey, any, anything can happen, no matter how grim it looks. Because if there's a game I, I'll always point people towards for comebacks, there, there was one game that me and Lumi casted there where uh, it was a Chinese game and one of the teams, it was CDEC, was up 40,000 gold and they threw the game. I thought that was you and me. What are you talking oh, about? You? God damn, man. You're just replacing oh, me bad. with Lumi? Oh, I can't believe it. Right, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> my bad. <laughs> <laughs> You're all the same to me. Lyrical, Lumi. <laughs> same thing. Oh, no. All right. Well, 37 to 27. ILTW up on the oh, high ground. They made it out. Okay. The glimpse back in now. Turn it back around. Trying to bring him down. Four staff to keep him alive. DK Phobos turns to fight. Crystallize up in the air for the moment by himself. Ages. Now, can they make this play happen? Maybe Team Spirit recognizing that the Aegis Carrier is not the one they want to go on. They're starting to bring down the last of the pandas. But you should be able to get the blink out now for Iceberg. Nope, there's the glimpse back in. They pull him in Echo! Oh, what One an to Echo! Four. They destroy him! Maybe gonna be able to find some more hand of God does come out though. Roger saving the day yet again. Carito starting to fall as well. He is taking a ton of damage, but going to live through this one. Ah, they oh, turn it back around, and now you. they got the Monkey King. It was looking good for a second, but only a second. As Navi... I think that's it. They're out of steam. There's no yeah, Echo anymore. The there's no split. Nor is there a chain block. But they're not giving up. They're going to go back in. Is it going to be enough? They take down Roger. But, again, the most pure of victories is GG eventually going to be called Navi. Take game number one of this best of three. And one game away from securing themselves the first minor of the 2017-2018 season. Oh, man. I, I can see why people like uh, watching Navi at the start of every season, right? It's like ever ever since you know they they had a good run, you know, TI one, TI two, TI three, and then ever since then they have kind of like declined ever since then, right? And every season people secretly want them to do well, so they always tune in to see if he's gonna if they're gonna make it. So we might, I mean, we might be seeing the uh, the initial 
you know, Navi is back potentially uh, with I this mean, next game. I'm sure that people are saying it, but the question is, is it actually going to be true? And, and can they finish this off? Because, you know, there's been games where they've looked really good and they started off a series strong. And then, you know, you think back to that last series against Spirit. I think that they won game number one and then they ended up losing the next two afterwards, uh, if I'm not mistaken. So they need to make sure that they, they keep up the momentum. And likewise for Team Spirit, um, I'm wondering if the they have a new answer once all their heroes are banned out. Because the first two bands were Nature's Prophet and Io, which were two of the heroes that Team Spirit was using throughout the qualifiers to secure them the win. I think that that was what also they beat Navi with. Do you think that we're going to see uh, Navi continue to ban them out? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say yes. Uh, you're up one game. You might as well stick with you know, what, what you won you the first game. I'm pretty sure Navi are going to change their draft though i think they they play pretty well whenever they just like change their entire lineup they're, they're the kind of team that like to me feels like they don't like sitting on the same type of strategy they like to move around they're very fidgety for sure all right well we'll see if their fidgetiveness can <laughs> pull it through in game number two <laughs> we'll be back in just a few everybody it's the grand finals for the star ladder i league season three Lyrical, Lyrical, I almost said Lyrical and Lumi. Lyrical and Aosin, you're two casters for this one. If you can replace me, I can replace you too. God damn it. We'll see you guys in a few. For game number two. World Electronic Sports Games returns with a new season, the largest championship among national teams in the history of eSports. Dota 2, Hearthstone, CSGO, StarCraft 2, and $5.5 million at stake. European finals will be held in marvelous Barcelona from the 22nd to the 26th of November. Win your slot in the finals of the World Championship. Register right now.
given to uncertainty The unknown has shown grace But yet the third degree Lessons from the truth Moves closer so can you pay the fee From A to B Cascade brain I hate to be Voice of the last star fighter I am Esquire Shape of my skull Beholds I am the star child Sightless Going beyond the song Timeless Right righteous But what's left is really priceless Treat me how you wanna be But suddenly you're hunting me Yes the sky is falling Chicken little Don't you love to be Screaming out the obvious But never saying help me Just too much to handle in the world now we melting Save it to the heart of driving countless stars until I cry Flowers in the final view, the world is ending, come inside Graceful, when we gone, the earth will ride a fable Seas will rejoice in the skies, rise faithful Sun still sets and the buildings will still crumble Meek inherit the earth, the comfort of the humble Just setting the moon, come closer, I hug you Say I love you right before the sky tumbles Put it in the atmosphere, raise it up until we're near Touching on the face of God, maybe now he's gonna hear Joy coming in the morning, most of us will shed a tear Looking at the final act, hoping that we hold it dear Put it in the atmosphere, raise it up until we're near Touching on the face of God, maybe now he's gonna hear Joy coming in the morning, most of us will shed a tear Looking at the final act, hoping that we hold it dear Mission of the schism, a mighty key in the wisdom Put it to the chamber and let it go to the rhythm I'm moving to the ocean and break it out of the prison World full of wonder, I wonder if I will live it Full to my abilities with super high fidelity Put it to the tide of life, but still it's just an elegy Screaming to the closest cloud and watch it as it's coming down Sun setting in the morning while the moon is just the ground crazy By learning that you're about to have a baby Two coming together, forming a better maybe Raising the glass, feeling the feeling so amazing Like music playing while the sky is fading, praying for safety Quiet in a deeper soul, speaking through the notes and told Deeper meanings of being dedication on one accord Let's begin, measure of the moment till the world ends Space between the breath is eternity as the earth spins Smile as a child do, listening to mother's tunes Weight is on my shoulders, but its color is a shade of blue Put it in the atmosphere, raise it up until we near Touching on the face of God, maybe now he's gonna hear Joy coming in the morning, most of us will shed a tear Looking at the final act, hoping that we hold it dear Put it in the atmosphere, raise it up until we near Touching on the Face to God, maybe now he's gonna hear Joy coming in the morning, most of us will shed a tear Looking at the final act, hoping that we hold it dear Electronic Sports Games returns with a new season, the largest championship among national teams in the history of eSports. Dota 2, Hearthstone, CSGO, StarCraft 2, and $5.5 million at stake. European finals will be held in marvelous Barcelona from the 22nd to the 26th of November. Win your slot in the finals of the World Championship. Register right now. 
Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome back again to the Starlighter I-League Invitational Season 3. We're going to be taking a look at game number two now. Navi facing off against Team Spirit. I'm Lyrical, joined as well by Aelson. We're going to be bringing you the action and calling what we're seeing in front of us as we've seen a little bit of a switch up this time around. It's Team Spirit who take the Night Stalker and the Necro, and it's Navi with Disruptor Void. What are you thinking, my man? Oh... Um, well, Team Spirit, they before the game started, they asked for a as long as possible delay for the game to start. Really Ten needed the time to remaining. talk it out, figure out what they need to do. So, I mean, I'm Five I'm ready to see the changes uh, that they have in mind going into this game. They're going to ignore the Panda, for starters. Yeah, that didn't feel like it really offered the most in that last game. It felt like it was, uh, in some ways almost not not necessarily a liability but like it didn't fit with the script of what they were trying to do almost like you know broodmother was going around finding a bunch of kills kind of on her own and then uh they didn't end up using the brewmaster ulti all that much this time around i'd expect to see them uh probably make better use of whatever offlander ends up being do you think that this is going to be a three night stalker or a four uh team pick so far, my guess is three. Team pick. The reason why I say that is because I've never seen FNG play Night Stalker, but I mean, I'm, I'm sure he can play it. So we'll just have to see. It's, it's too hard to make yeah. a prediction so far. For sure. And since there is a Void as well as an Earthshaker, I think uh, giving your Night Stalker a little more farm priority would definitely help remaining. out uh, in getting that Scepter a little faster. Five yeah, seconds remaining. that would be quite good. And... I mean, you don't even necessarily... We've seen some... Obviously, that last game, Scepter was amazing because of all of the initiating heroes. And I guess it's the same type of thing here. I will say I'm a little bit worried about Na'Vi because the thing that they've looked really good at the past three games was shutting down the vision and asserting dominance with that. In this game, it doesn't look like they have the tools to do that so much yet versus Team Spirit, who have a Night Stalker. So naturally, it's going to be hard to see what's happening around the map. Maybe they could have their next couple picks help to address that issue, Clockwork, or... Um, I don't think you can go Ricky this game. No, I don't think so either. I don't think you want to go Ricky anyways, simply because there's already not so much uh, going into the Chronosphere. They might go back to their Skywrath, but like you said... Skywrath is only, you know, there to provide Dying damage, but... Pick. And with Seneco already Red. most likely going to be on the Disruptor, I don't even know if they yeah. can really do it. It'd be tough. Um, they're going to go PL. So that's something that Crystallize has proven to be quite competent on, and if he can get the same type of farm that he got... As long as Team Spirit don't pick Anti-Mage, I think they're fine. <laughs> the, uh, yeah, remaining. Phantom Lancer, pretty good against the Necrophos, you know, one of the defusal carries, so that you can actually purge off remaining. the Ghost Shroud. Radiant um, team back. Sven, Sven coming out immediately. This is definitely the right pick because playing Phantom Lancer against a Sven is suffering. <laughs> that doesn't sound fun at all. I don't, I don't want to see that. He does have a lot of things to kind of worry about, though, with the Chronosphere already there and remaining. Earthshaker Fissure sometimes being an awkward uh, interaction to play Five around. And they also remaining. don't have anything like a Dark Seer to kind of pull it all together. Um, Maybe that's something that they could run with themselves if they wanted to. I, I don't know. Do you think that that's an issue at all? Mm, I think, if anything, they need some initiation right now. You have the Night Stalker to provide you vision. I'm pretty sure this is no longer going to be a offlane Night Stalker. Um, I think it's better to have him as a 4. You have a 5 Rubik. And then you pick up an uh, initiating hero remaining. on the offlane so that you can actually set up or prevent a Void remaining. from actually jumping on your team. So... I think that's probably the best option they have for them. Okay. Ban of the Legion Commander. That's one of those initiating type of heroes. Biver Rubik most likely as well. Playing against his former team. And we'll have to wait what that last set of bans is. It's going to be a team spirit. Actually, Navi got, got, uh, got last pick as well. So... What do you feel like Na'Vi kind of need out of their last pick? They need a mid-hero that can follow up on this uh, this Void's Chrono. Maybe I think like going back to the Marana actually isn't a isn't a bad idea either. I think it's actually pretty good here. 
and other heroes that Dendi's taken has been like a Quap or a, a Puck too. But yeah, I, I like the idea that you're talking about there. Anybody that can throw damage in that Chrono. Actually, going back to the Invoker is not a bad idea either. 